So this is the first and only assignment for quiz seven, dealing with graphing radical functions in basically, specifically, square root functions and cube root functions. So if you have a square root function, it's going to look like half of a particular cube root function. And so there's the starting point that we need to figure out. And the reason it's half is because part of its domain is stricken because to make a long story short, you can't take the square root of a negative number in the real number system. So the domain and range when it comes to that for square root functions um, or when this denominator is even, <clears throat> we're gonna have to figure out. And for cube root functions, because cube roots can be positive or negative, there's no restriction on the domain and range. And it basically is all reals if you see this denominator is, is an odd number, but we're just gonna deal with uh, cube roots. So you will automatically say all reals when you come for domain and range, when you come to cube root functions. And so it's gonna be all about finding out the symmetry point for cube root functions and what I call the starting point for square root functions. So what does this look like? <clears throat> So I will go through and do half of these for you. So the very first thing that you want to do is get uh, this in exponent form. Yeah, I think it helps to see when you you know put it on a graphing calculator that uh, it just helps to to graph. So this is going to be one of these square root functions that has a starting point, and it's going to look like one of these four here. So the A is simply what is multiplied in front. So it's this guy here. What's multiplied in front of the parentheses, okay, which in this case is one. And then the H, so to get H, we solve the G of X, so the function that's inside, whatever is in here, we solve that equal to zero. And then the K is just simply what's added on the end. So the three, two, when I come down here, that's gonna be a minimum starting point, okay, in this. So how do we know that? Well, um, A is one, okay, it's positive, so that it's a minimum. And now I want to say some of this only matters when Q is even. So if Q is odd, a lot of this is just uh, we figure the symmetry point out. So you always figure out H and K, always. But if um, Q is odd, then this becomes really easy. The domain and range is all reals. You kind of fly through it. But I got this minimum from here. So after you do this right here, uh, you take this, all of this information down here. Okay, so, and you're only going to have half of the table that you'll see here. So it won't exist to the left of two. Or I'm sorry, to the left of three, excuse me. All right, before we go to graph, domain and range. So since Q is even, we've got to figure this out. If Q is odd, if it was a cube root, the domain would be all reals, the range would be all reals, so there'd be no restriction. So we have to solve the G of X greater than or equal to zero. This is how we get the domain. So there's the domain, really easy. And then the range, we just pick one depending upon A. Well, A was greater than zero, so here it is. So we take the K value less than or equal to Y now, just so you know, this means the same as y is greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so um, if you wanted to, um, this would be y is less than or equal to k. Um, just turn that around, make it a k like that. <clears throat> it's pretty easy to figure out um, which one is which. All right, so what do you do down here? So you come up to 3, 2, that's where you start. And then you need two points to the right of this. So what I always try to do is look for whole number values. So I'm going to put this in. 
x minus 3 to the 0.5, you can do 0.5, plus 2. And then make sure your table is set. And then see how left of 3, there's nothing. And so I just deal with whole number values. So 4, 3 is the next one. And then 7, 4 is the third one. And then just deal with those. That should work. And then you can take a look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, up to 4. You can take a look at the graph. Now, if this were a cube root, we would have the other half of this coming in like so. Okay, but we only have half of the graph because it is a square root and the piece of the graph, if it were a cube root that would come this way is, is not there. So that's the difference between these two graphs um, is that you've got like half to do or a whole one to do depending. And then pretty much all I do is just go back and forth. Oh, I see I'm going to have to um, do successive problems here to get a cube root in here. So problem two. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is write it. So how does this work? So the power underneath here of what's ever underneath this power is this one here. And then this little index here is the denominator. And so that's a little tricky to get right a lot of times, but that's what you do. Okay, so this is odd. And uh, yeah, I think I circled that last time. We're good. So the fact that this is an odd, meaning a symmetry point, the domain and range is just all reals. So however you want to write this, automatically you do this. Okay, so you only do the, the restrictions, the, the figuring of the domain if Q is even. Okay, and then the A is 1, and it's positive. Um, now, you only worry about this, these two, only when Q is, is even. So there's not a min or a max. It's a symmetry point. So this does not even come into play. We'll try to cross all out here that does not come into play at all when Q is odd. When Q is odd, it's very, very simple to do. You got a little bit more of a table to do, but it's very simple to do. You always have to solve the G of X equal to zero. So we get negative one. And then K is whatever is added on the end there. So negative one, negative two is the symmetry point. Now you have to fill out the rest of the table in both directions. And then you have to get the graph right to the one third. Then you have to get the graph right when you graph it. So again, I always look for, so you should see points around negative one, negative two. So zero, negative one, and then negative two, negative three. And you should look for one more up the way. And we get to 7, 0. And so that's going to tell me negative 9 there. How did I know that? Because it's symmetry. These graphs are symmetrical, so negative 4. Look at that pattern of the x's and the y's. Look at that pattern. So now what I mean by negative 1, negative 2 being a symmetry point these will happen in a straight line, but it's not a straight line on the graph. And I will show you what to do. Three, four, five, six, seven. And then one, two, three. And then down to four. So do half the graph at, at once. So I'm going to do this half that's kind of cupping down. It's going to hit slightly go above. So like if it was just that graph, like a square root graph. And then this part's going to be cupped up. And at the symmetry point is where the turnover is. Now that X I'm just marking as a symmetry point. So cup up, cup down. 
The difference is with the square root, okay, you only have half of that to do. And all of the rest of the stuff that I crossed out matters. All right, so let's just do a couple more of these. Um, let's do seven and eight. And then the rest can be for you to do. Okay, so seven, we're back to a square root function. The first thing we're going to do. So all this stuff now matters. Okay, so Q is two. So we have a max min point. Um, this is going to be, so A is one. It's positive, so there's going to be a minimum here. So we've got a minimum. Um, min meant to circle. And we're at, so <clears throat> x plus 3, so x equals negative 3 and 1. So at negative 3, 1 is the min point. So now all of this stuff matters. So now we have to take x plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. So x is greater than or equal to negative 3 is the domain. And then the range, um, a is greater than 0, so it's going to be one less than or equal to y, or y is greater than or equal to one. I should have just put them without the infinity, but there you go. <clears throat> and so now you need to figure out um, the table, which I'm going to tell you to the left of negative three is no good. This will be, this will be the table and what it looks like. So negative three, one, negative two, two, and one, three. So again, it's half of, it stops there. Instead of having this other piece down here, like cubes do, it's half. And then this, you know, this negative three, one, you can consider that to be like your, your quote unquote vertex point. All right, problem eight. is a cube root again. So none of the specific stuff matters with domain and range. So Q is three, A is one. Um, so this does not matter. G of X equals zero, we get two and negative three. So domain is all reals, range is all reals. This does not matter and we have a symmetry point at 2, negative 3. And again, you should be able to get on to um, your calculator's table. So this will always happen. Well, with the type of problems that I give you, it will always happen. So you see that those three in a row like that. And then you should be able to get out far enough right and left, so that's uh, seven to the right. So we go seven to the left this way. There is a pattern with the table that you can figure out. So two negative three is the symmetry point, and three negative two, and then one negative four. Kind of looks like they're on a line, but they're not on a line. Now this one should be four. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, negative 1. This one needs to be a little bit lower. And then negative 6, negative 5. So again, you're going to see this, like half of it, like that. And then the other half. And it slowly keeps rising. It's a very slow riser, but it does go out here. These are not asymptotes, even though I kind of do. It does eventually hit um, the x-axis out here. It does keep rising and rising and rising. Okay, and um, you could find that on your calculator wherever it hits, but it's not an asymptote, and it's important to know that um, it is not. Okay, so it does keep rising. 
I probably should try to make it look like that. So that's graphing cube root functions. Okay, so note what to ignore on this. If you have, um, you know, a cube root, the domain is all reals, the range is all reals, you have a full table to do. Um, if you have a square root, Okay, you have half the table to figure out and you have the domain and the range to figure out and it's a max min point. Okay, I don't think I circled the odd um, symmetry here yet. So that should be circled there. All right, so that's your loan assignment on um, quiz seven for Algebra 2B, second trimester.